So in this video, I'll provide a transparent look at my stock portfolio for 2023. I'll discuss the specific investments I made, the challenges I faced, and how much money I've made this year. But before I talk about how much I made in 2023, let's take a look at what went wrong in the past. Initially, I invested in high growth stocks during the pandemic and it went really well until it didn't. The sustainability of their growth proved challenging. The subsequent decline in investor confidence led to a sell-off in these stocks. However, this created a much larger problem. My investment decisions lacked thorough valuation analysis. This resulted in purchasing stocks without considering their intrinsic value, meaning I lost money and rather quickly. Two big losses highlighted the need for a more disciplined investment strategy. One such loss involved Argo blockchain, which I purchased due to FOMO, the fear of missing out, despite limited understanding of the cryptocurrency market. This resulted in a 50% loss or £3,800 when I sold at the end of 2021. Recognizing my lack of knowledge and developing fundamental analysis skills has now become a crucial part of my strategy. And after holding Boohoo for three years, I realized the need to exit this position, accepting a 75% loss of £19,800. My missteps with this investment revolved around buying at a very inflated price to earnings ratio and investing in a company lacking a competitive moat against price driven competitors. So yeah, I messed up big time, but hey, mistakes happen and I've learned a lot in this time about valuing stocks and picking companies that can actually dominate. I hope my experiences can serve as a valuable lesson to you watching this video. From this, I now offer one-to-one -one calls so that I can share my experiences to help educating you avoid the pitfalls of investing. To find out more, click the link in the description down below. And before I expose my portfolio performance, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the current stocks and discuss my most bullish holdings. Starting with my underperforming stock. This one faces cyclical challenges and geographical risks. Despite its strong financial position with high cash, margins and a high dividend, I'm keeping my exposure of Sylvania Platinum limited for the longer term. The next stock is a dominant player with consistent cash flow generation, but it faces temporary headwinds in South America. While I hold Diageo for diversification, I'm not purchasing any further shares until the situation becomes clearer. Despite strong performance, which is up 35% since buying in September, the next stock carries significant supplier risk. I am content with my current position, but will keep a close eye on the watches of Switzerland Group given their high exposure to Rolex. October has been a very good month for me. I managed to snag a couple of gems, including Halma, now up 26%, and Ashtag Group that's up 14%. Ashtag Group has had a hiccup, but it is a one-off blip, but I am keeping an eye out for more deals just like these ones. The London Stock Exchange Group, Alphabet and Mastercard remain strong performers in their respective markets and while I value their competitive advantages, I'm waiting for more favourable entry points to increase my holdings as they do seem quite pricey at the moment. That said, there is one such holding that I won't be increasing anytime soon and that's Games Workshop. It takes up a significant portfolio weight being 47.5% of my overall portfolio portfolio, but it just doesn't justify selling. I will prioritize diversifying my holdings with future investments, ideally aiming for a balanced long-term exposure of 20% with Games Workshop. So onto the juice of the video, how much money did I make in 2023? Did I beat the markets or should have I just dumped my money in an index fund instead? Well, it's complicated, but some keen viewers already know how well I fared, and that's because they have live access to the portfolio. It's completely free, just check it out in the link in the description down below. Accurately tracking stock returns can be challenging. While sophisticated software exists, it can be expensive and requires complex data manipulation. Alternatively, creating your own tracking system through spreadsheets or coding demands significant mathematical expertise and time taken. 
So whilst specialized tools are unavailable at the moment, I will use the data provided by my broker, Free Trade, and as a bonus, I'll do my best to calculate my performance separately for comparison. Free Trade states my performance at 16.2% time weighted return in 2023, exceeding the FTSE All World ETF benchmark at 14.4%. However, when considering my investment performance from 2020 onwards, I have certainly underperformed the market with a minus 57% return compared to the FTSE All Worlds plus 80%. But my free trade performance isn't perfect because it includes time before I even invested a single penny. Okay, so let's look at how much my actual money grew, not including dividends. In 2023, I made 10.6%, beating the UK market, FTSE 100, at 2.4%, but not the US market, the S&P 500, at a whopping 25%. Sure, the UK market pays out nice dividends at a 3.5% dividend yield, but even if I added that to the capital gains, it's only 5.9%. So the idea of just buying an index fund isn't always the answer, and an investor should strongly consider global market diversification. Going forward, I'm very optimistic about the future returns of my portfolio, but it will certainly take many years to climb out of the hole that I have dug myself into. If you're interested in tracking your stock returns but aren't sure where to start, then I've got you covered. Click here to learn about the best ways to monitor your stock portfolio effectively.